The National Cutting Horse Association presents Behind the Mines, a series by the Converse Cowboy, featuring James Payne. Brought to you in part by Performance Horse Central and these fine sponsors. The NCHA has been an important part of my life and my husband's life and my children's life and it helps teach children so many advantages in life. They, they learn how to work, they learn how to work together. The friendship, the satisfaction, the focus. You know, my boys have become very good businessmen, know how to work with other people. We work together as a family and that's important to us. It's day three. I've been watching almost every set for the last three days. And what I've realized, and I've heard a lot of people say it, it doesn't matter who you are, how much money you've won, or how good your horse is, anything can happen in Will Rogers during the Futurity. So I've got to think, knowing James Payne, there's a ton of pressure that you put on yourself, the expectations from yourself, for yourself, and for your horses. How do you handle all of it? Sometimes you don't. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, you do it as best you can, but it could go really bad tomorrow, and it just kind of out of my control. I put way more pressure on myself than, you know, like I've rode horses for Kathleen, she owns both of the two I'm gonna show. I've rode horses for, for I don't know, it's over, well over 10 years, I think now, and if I go and, and do bad, the first thing she says is, are you happy with horses and stuff like that, and so, if I'm going to show anything for her, I don't get any pressure from her. It's all what I put on myself. I think I said in the earlier interview, it's competition. You want your friends to do good, but you don't want to see them doing good and you not doing good, you know? So, I mean, it's just a lot of internal pressure. You know, that first day, the first three bunches looked pretty tough. The cows got a little better as the day went on. The cold front moved in. Looks to me like the cows are pretty decent right now. Could go show. So, I mean, you very well could have drawn up on that first day and did everything you could have done and got ran over pretty easy. What was your initial thought whenever you saw the draws come out? So you're on the fourth day, second set, third set. Part of me kind of would rather go ahead and show early and get it done early and then that way you don't have to watch everybody go show before you do. I've done both. I, I think where you would want to draw it just depends on how well you do. <laughs> you tell know, me but, after. But, yeah, I'll tell you after, but yeah. like I sure as heck wouldn't want to have been in the first three bunches on Wednesday. I guess it's just all where <laughs> where you do good at. I haven't heard many people talk about routines specifically around like game day. You know, so you wake up tomorrow, what does James Payne do? I like the Get my horse work. We're gonna stay the night. I'll probably find somewhere to go sit and just kind of chill for a minute and watch the deal. Um, so like I'm in the second bunch on the one mare, so I'll probably kind of watch that first bunch. Maybe not really watch cows real close, just watch people, watch the flow, watch just kind of how things are being. I don't really like being screwed with on that. And just It's different when there's not as much at stake. I think the biggest deal in the maturity that makes it so hard is the fact that you, know, you only have two horses and you wait around for so long. So are you doing any visualizations? I, yeah, I like, but I kind of do that kind of visualization stuff. I've been doing that for the last couple of days, you know, just thinking about how I want to do it and kind of how I want to execute. And I give you an example like today, riding around and my horses feel just a little bit edgy, not as comfortable as what they were, but they're probably feeling me a little bit. And, you know, it's just kind of like, kind of giving myself my own little pep talk about kind of like, I didn't school and train to be scared, and I didn't train in school to just be real wishy-washy and passive about how I approach it, you know, and so kind of slap yourself on the face and say, come on, let's go get it, and it is what it is. If I am aggressive and I cut a bad cow, then I'd rather go out doing that than miss a cut because I didn't step up and go cut my cow. I've been having that conversation with myself all day about step up, come cut your cow, sit there and make sure you watch the settler move the cow, move it off of them, and see how it acts and responds. And once you have sat there and you've watched it go back a time or two, then go cut it. Don't be scared to go cut it. James Payne is a damn good horse trainer. But at the end of the day, if you zoom out 30,000 feet, you're still a human being. We have a brain that never stops running. It 
most of the time it's negative chatter by default. So on game day, how does James Payne slow those thoughts down and focus on what you want to get done? I don't know, I think it's just been repetition, doing it over and over again for a lot of years. And I don't think that I do any better of a job keeping the negative thoughts out. I just feel like it becomes muscle memory a little bit more. You made an interesting point during the last interview and, and how you go about the first go and you don't hold anything back. And so how do you balance that though, James? Like, How do you balance being aggressive and showing with finesse? You're trying to act aggressive when you're not aggressive. You're, you're kicking whenever the cow's not coming to you. You're trying to take risk whenever there's really not that great of a risk to take. So like you're wanting to cut that cow that gives you a little bit of room and stays away from you and then you ride really aggressive, you know, where it looks like you're being courageous but you're not really taking that risk. And so that's the strategy, that's the goal, that's the how to like kind of leave nothing on the table. That's like I've practiced all fall to walk up there and get my cow cut and throw my hand down quick and make them grab a hold right off the bat. Now, whether that happens tomorrow, I don't know, but that's the goal. Like I said, it's looking like you're taking the risk when it's just practice. So you talked about being aggressive, going back just for a second. What kind of cows are you gonna to try to cut in that first go? I kind of want to cut like the slow to medium. In this pin and Will Rogers, to me, like you can show off your cuts. If you show that you're not scared to go cut and you cut a 72 cow, like in 72 cows, like kind of a medium speed, but you work that cow for a while and you go cut it, then that two turns into a three. Mm -hmm. Like if you watch the runs today, you get three cows cut clean and they're decent and in the middle and you don't have any penalties, they're gonna mark you 17 and a half to 19. So you're watching cows, that's your focus, and then you go down. What is it that you want to feel from your horse before you ride in for the first time? I'm going to probably go down a little earlier than most. Some people just go like a horse before. I'm going to go probably a couple horses before. I just want them kind of like if I sit down, they stop. And if I kind of open my legs, they better be backing up. I want to pull them around enough where they kind of come down and kind of get under my thumb. I want to be able to trot over there, sit down, have them stop, come back, foot turn them, kind of leave my hand down and get them to where they kind of come through that turn off my foot just so that I can help guide them through it just a little bit. What's the conversation like with your team before you ride in for the first time there at the maturity? At Fort Worth, I use Josh Townsend and John Mitchell to get me out. I get Lloyd and Sean Flynn to turn me. It's a little bit strategic. I like John Mitchell because he forces me. I might gravitate towards this little slow little black cow and he's going to pull me to that Charlet with a little more ear that's going to have a little more move. And Josh Townsend, I feel like he's going to be pretty thorough on the cows, know the cows. He's going to be kind of probably somewhere in the blend of between me and John. Like John's going to be the one that pulls me and he says, hey, what do you think about the Charlet? And I'm like, I don't know. And I say, what do you think, Josh? And he's like, yeah, it's probably all right. And I like that, that aspect of it. So, I mean, that's kind of why I got the two guys that I got in that situation. I'm very comfortable with Josh and he's going to pick cows a little bit closer to me. I, don't know, I might pick slower when I'm getting more nervous, but you know, than what he is. But, and then yeah, I got John that, that kind of challenged me and challenges it and says, hey, had a little more, you know. Mm -hmm. Two years of training, a lot of sweat, a lot of money goes into riding these three-year-olds down the pen for the first time at Will Rogers. What is it that you're focused on whenever you're riding in for the first time on those horses? If the two horses I'm gonna show are what I think they are and what I hope that they are, then they're supposed to take care of me a little bit. It's not my job to carry the horse. It's they're supposed to kind of help me get out of the hole a little bit if they're what I hope that they are. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is, is I mean, you know, it's just the first show. I can tell you who who won the Futurity last year, and I can tell you kind of probably 
I can maybe get eight out of the 10 people that won the Futurity the last 10 years, but it's like, I can't tell you who made the Futurity finals last year. I'm more interested in like this horse becoming a, a consistent open horse than I am about this first show. And all that stuff I say, it's kind of like a little bit of a way to kind of relieve the pressure off of myself that I'm gonna put on myself yeah. to do good at the show. Well, you talked about that the last time we, we sat down, um, like that you downplay the futurity and downplay all of the hype, which in a way, it's kind of like releasing any attachment to an outcome or a result. And I don't know, for me, like when I do that, it's like, yeah, you have the expectation. Of course, you want to go win, you're a competitor, but it does, mentally it somewhat settles me down anyway whenever i think that way my owners probably don't want to hear this and like customers don't want to hear this but like when you play at this level and you play at this open level like it's percentages i mean it, it is so like if you're an amateur and you're going to compete and you're going to you've got two horses you're going to show in four classes at a show you don't get to do this all day every day so basically like if you're making 25 to a third of your per percent of your finals then that's a success. It's the same way with me. It's like, so everybody in my class, they are really, really good. They do, they work really hard. They do a good job. They show really good, everything else like that. It's the same thing. If I go to a show and I get 25% back to a third back, I've got to be happy with myself. That's just how cows work, horses work, judging works, competition works. I used to get tore up if I, you know, showed four horses and I get one back to the finals and be a miserable person for the rest of the show because only you know got one out of the four and that's that's just unrealistic i don't know that everybody realizes so you have customers and so with that the years amateurs there's non-pros and so you're training their horses along with yours i think it's important to let people know like you're not only a horse trainer you're a coach, psychologist, you're in the hospitality business, you're an entrepreneur, and the list goes on and on. Those are the things that people don't see. They see you in the magazines, they see you at these shows, but all of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes, like how are you managing that along with trying to get your mind right to go show for yourself? Well, I don't know. I feel like it's you compartmentalize a little bit. I mean, it's kind of like you work really, really hard. Everybody come practice on their horses before the show. There was several days in there where I had multiple people there riding. I like getting everybody practiced up and all the amateur horses and non-pro horses work really, really thorough up until the show starts. And then once this open starts, then you kind of let the edge down just a little bit and let them kind of come back and soften up a little bit and get maintenance. And then once you get through the heat of this open deal, then you start cranking it back up and focusing on that. I feel like it's harder to manage that stuff towards the end of the futurity than it is at the beginning of the futurity. You got all the amateur, you got all the non-pro, and then you throw in all the Western bloodstock sales, and then, you know, still trying to keep your mind right if you did make the semis or something like that. Like the way this deal set up is, is you pre-work, pre-work, pre-work right there before the first two goes, and then you have like 10 days before the semis if you make the semis, and so, in that point, it gets more complicated to kind of keep your stuff together, I think, from going from there, because it's almost like by the time you get into the semis and go to the finals, it's like a whole nother show. What is James Payne's metric for success during the next few weeks here in Fort Worth at the NCHA Futurity? Getting to where it pays money. That's pretty much what success is. Whether I have a horse make the non-pro finals then, or the amateur finals or, or the open finals or semis. From a business point of view, I want all my customers to do good. From a selfish point of view, it's not near as sweet if the non-pro makes the finals if, if I didn't make the finals. That's just human nature of the whole deal. But I mean, success is not a championship. Success is if you get them to the money round. So what is the show shirt gonna be tomorrow? I rode horses for Jim Short. One year for Christmas, he gave me some shirts that were handmade from South Texas, and I've liked them, so I've ordered several of them, and just a plain blue. I don't like any writing on it. Some very mild colored shirt. Right on. Is that every Fort Worth show? That's pretty much any time there's money up. Uh, it's kind of what I'm going to gravitate towards, a lighter colored shirt. I'll say this, that Probably what saddle I show in will be more important than what shirt I show in. I, I, I'll either show in a saddle my dad made or, or Ron Carlton. Last year I had uh, I'd made the semis on the Caddy Hawk Gildan and 
and I found out that morning that they'd gotten stolen and I ended up getting them back. But by the time I showed them semis, my, my horse wasn't very good in the semis last year. At that point, it didn't really matter because I was mad that I was showing him something other than that. So probably be either a Jimmy Payne or a Ron Carlton saddle and pretty mild shirt. Right on. What about bit? What will be your show bit? Pretty much like showing a lot in an S shank, Kerry Kelly S shank. It's either a solid mouthpiece or a correction. Both these two mares I'll probably show in a solid mouthpiece S shank. That's kind of the bit that I've liked the best on them. That's about everything I show in is some sort of S shank. Well, man, thanks again for your time. I know it's hectic around here. Y'all are trying to get horses ready. You're in there helping people. Um, so I appreciate you coming in to sit down and, and sharing your wisdom and knowledge. And uh, man, I wish you the best of luck tomorrow. All right, thanks.